So sometimes, in a vinyl fence, maybe you want to remove a post. You can use this application for a removable post in a fence line, giving you a wider area to get something through it into your yard, or for a removable post in a double drive gate system like we have done. So first things first, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that my sleeve fits my post. And it does. Note that I have a bolt in place, because that bolt is what's gonna hold my post. Measuring from the bolt up is where you would measure to find your initial height of your post. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a really strong tape. I like this Gorilla Tape myself. And I'm gonna tape right on the seam of the sleeve and the post. So I'm gonna put one piece there and one piece here. This is just to marry them together temporarily to make them one. Because I wanna be able to set this as a system, but I know you've seen the other videos. I know, I know you've watched them. So when are you gonna talk about stabbing? We're not gonna stab this post. If you stab this post, you're gonna have a sleeve and a post that is not removable, and you don't want that. You wanna be able to make sure that the sleeve stays in the ground and is permanent, but the post comes out of the sleeve. So, hopefully we have enough tape. So you can tape your bottom off. No, no. It's not ideal, but got some electrical tape. I ran out of my Gorilla tape. And instead of going to the store, I resorted to whatever else I had in my truck so we can continue the shoot. You can also not tape your bottom if you want. What you're gonna do if you don't tape your bottom, you're gonna set it in your hole, you're gonna pour your concrete around that sleeve, and then a little bit later on, you're gonna lift that sleeve up. I'm still gonna do kind of that same thing though. I'm just taking out the chance of that concrete falling into the cavity. The reason that I want that to be hollow is so that that way, being in Wyoming, when the water goes into that sleeve, if it ices over and I'm wanting to remove that post in the wintertime, that post might be frozen into that sleeve. So therefore I want my water to be able to drain to the ground. So I want a solid cavity through that sleeve, through the concrete, into the ground for water drainage. Now I know what you're thinking but you tape the bottom so it's gonna retain water. No, because as soon as we set that sleeve, what we would do is we would come back and punch that tape out. When we go to remove that post, we'd take something like a stake and punch that tape out to allow water drainage down to the soil. If you wanted to, and if you're really worried about it, you could also throw gravel down there for water drainage as well. Totally your discretion, up to you. We don't. For this process, we're gonna use three bags of Quickcrete. Even though it's a sleeve, we're still treating it as the bottom of the post. So we still have to make sure that all that concrete goes in there and we still have to make sure that we're digging our hole to depth. All that stuff is still just as important. Traditionally, what we do is we would pour the concrete in the hole, stab the post. I'm saying that so many times because we don't want you to do that. You wanna make sure and put the post with the sleeve in first and pour it around it. I'm gonna sight my post in where it should be. Take some concrete, pour around it. If you're worried about rust, like they are in Florida, over in Florida, they're using stainless steel. So there is a stainless steel option. Before I top it off, I'm gonna make sure that I'm still level. Uh, having a little bit in there just helps just to keep this in line. So now it's holding it so I can gently drop the concrete in there. For anybody that doesn't know, since we are setting a five by five post, you do want about a 12 inch diameter hole. And our hole was dug to 32 inches deep. One of the main things you wanna do is you don't want to pour your concrete above your sleeve. That's a no-no. The sleeve should protrude past the top of the concrete. Ideally, what we want, not make a mess with, it's getting everywhere. You want the sleeve to be flush with the ground or maybe just a touch above so that way you're trying to control the water that goes in there and you don't want your concrete to be above your sleeve to the point where you can't get your vinyl post out. So what we would do now is we'd let it sit just a little bit, set the rest of our fence line or maybe you just let it set for a little bit and have tea and a biscuit. After that, so you know your concrete's not going to fall, you would 
try to lift it up just a little bit to the point where our sleeve is just even with ground or a little bit above. So when we do that, we wanna make sure that the concrete's at least stiff enough to the point where it's not grabbing the sleeve, but we're able to keep that cavity there for water drainage. Before we do anything else, we're gonna go ahead and check to make sure that we're still level. We're gonna to top it off with dirt just to make sure that our sleeve height is good. It's like pretty dang near like right at it. At that point in time, once your sleeve is set, you can go ahead and figure out how tall your post needs to be to match your fence line. Measure and set your post sleeve height accordingly to make sure that your post is gonna be tall enough to match your fence. I'm gonna pull that, those two pieces of tape off and that's gonna give us a removable vinyl post. And I can feel that there's a cavity down there uh, underneath my tape. So after that hardened, I would punch that tape out. So that, that way I'm not retaining water and I don't have a chance of freezing my post inside my sleeve and I have my water drainage. Make sure and clean the concrete off your post if you got any on it. After testing everything out to make sure that your post goes in, to make sure it's in line, to make sure it's tall enough, once all that is done and all your dirt's in place, you have won. You have won! If you're building vinyl fence, make sure and check out this video right here. Five essential things to know before you build your vinyl fence. Or maybe check out this video right over here on how to build a vinyl privacy gate with one of our vinyl privacy gate kits. It's Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company. We hope you have a good dang day.